Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. They've asked me to recite some Quran, so I'm just going to do it a Fatiha. Everybody knows a Fatiha, right? You can recite with me if you like. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Now I'm not going to put on an Aussie accent so don't expect a huge Aussie accent because back in Melbourne they're going to laugh at me Okay, if I'm going to talk to you in Aussie accent, I would say something like, I'm really tired, got a cough, go home and flake it. You're not going to understand a word. So I'm just going to stick to normal English. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the topic that they've chosen for me is another companion named Az Zubair ibn al Awam. Put your hands up if you've heard of this companion before. You have? Know a little bit about Az Zubair ibn al Awam. Look, there are some lessons that I'd like to derive from there, and I think it will benefit us a lot. There's lessons about domestic violence. There's lessons about marriage. There's lessons from him about um, when you have a passion, but have wisdom with it. There's lessons about fitna, courage, bravery, raising children, marrying someone who's compatible to you. There's all this stuff in the story of a Zubair, radiallahu anhu. So here it goes. His name is Zubair, the son of Awam. His father was not a Muslim. He died when Zubair was very young. Zubair ibn Awam is the direct cousin of the Prophet ﷺ. His mother, anyone know his mother's name? Safiya, good man. MashaAllah. Safiya is the mother of Zubair. And you know why it's important for me to introduce Safiya radiallahu anha? She is the auntie of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It's so important to talk about her a little bit because of this. The role of mothers. Safiya was rough and tough as guts. Do you have that in Yuki said rough and tough? So Safiya was a very tough woman. She was fearless. She was brave. Obviously, she was a widow. And something about women, when they become divorced or widowed, they summon this strength somehow. To me, they become a little bit scary, but they summon this strength in a good way. And they're able to raise the children like a man and a woman. And Safiya radiallahu anha was like that. She raised Az Zubair to be a strong man with thick skin. He could face the biggest person, didn't care who it was. So what happened was at one time, he was only about seven or eight years old, and he did something wrong. So his mother, Sophia, she began to hit him. I'm not advocating hitting kids. All right, maybe a smack on the hand if they're about to touch the fire or something like that, but no more than that. But in those days, they used to hit their children, and it was a form of discipline. Not in an abusive form, in a disciplinary form. And his uncle, he came past, he saw his mum hitting a Zubair pretty harshly. And he used to take him off her and say, Woman, what's wrong with you? It's just a child. Stop hitting him. And she used to say, this is before Islam, by the way. She used to say, I'm preparing him for the wars and battles that are to come. I want him to win, and I want to bring back the spoils of war so that we can survive. That's the way they were, pre-Islam. He grew up able to take on all the roughness of the world. He was extremely resilient, just like his mother. You know what resilience is, right? You should teach your children resilience. It's like the palm tree. The Prophet, peace be upon him, called it like the palm tree. 
In the education field, we teach children now how to be resilient. In tough times, to come springing back, bouncing back. So the palm tree, it doesn't matter how strong the wind is, it'll bend with the wind in, in any direction, but it'll never get out of its roots. It won't change. It won't break out of its roots, and it won't break itself. It'll keep bending right to the bottom. When the storm is gone, the palm tree comes back to where it was. So we need to be like the palm tree. There are tough times ahead. So as Zubayr was grown, grew up like that, he was among the first five to convert to Islam. And he converted at about the age of 12, 12 years old. Now, 12 years old in those days is not like today, where a person is 20, 25 years old and still, you know, seems like a teenager. <laughs> 12 years old meant adult, that's it. Some companions got married at 12 years old. They had kids, believe it or not, at 12 and 13 years old. That was those days. When he became a Muslim, that uncle who used to stop his bum from hitting him, he started to torture him himself. Took him in a room, locked him up at the age of 12. And he lit up fire around the house, letting the smoke come inside you know, almost suffocating him. In another narration, it says that he used to roll him up in carpet and light up fire and let the smoke come into the carpet. So as Zubair grew up, man, it couldn't get any worse than that. He was tough. Tough in every sense of the word. After a while, as Zubair he became about 16 or 17. And you're probably thinking, this is a child who's been abused. Yep, he was abused. But there was something about him. An abusive child found a father figure among the best father figures. And he was Muhammad wasallam. He treated him like his own son. And that's what covered that gap. Now here's something important for you to know. Scientists say that a child develops their personality by the age of seven. And it's very hard to change them after that. So instead of trying to change their personality, channel it. Channel that energy into the right direction. And that's what Muhammad wasallam did with the Zubair. He channeled his energy and his frustration, all of that other stuff. He was aware that he was abused when he was a child. So he channeled that energy in the right direction. That's all he did. You can't just change people. Even when you get married, you can't just change that person. You know, brothers, you see a sister who's, for example, a particular type, she's not really your type, and you think to yourself, oh, she's just so gorgeous, maybe I can change her. Or brothers, they say, mashallah, man, this guy is like, he's really fit. <laughs> You're laughing because I have not seen a fit man yet here in the UK, man. I don't know. <laughs> a fit is something else? All right, I'll keep going because I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so what happened is, I'm just joking, brothers. So you can't really change a person, but you can channel that energy in another direction, especially with children. So as Zubair, what happened was that at 16 or 17, listen to this carefully, he heard a rumor. Somebody had slandered the Prophet ﷺ that said something really bad about him. And he thought that the Prophet ﷺ was abducted. He was taken away and he was going to be killed, or he was killed. Obviously, it was a rumor. So what does a Zubayr do? Like any other 16, 17-year-old, he carries a sword. <laughs> he carries a sword, and he became the first person to draw his sword in Islam, for the sake of Islam. Now, listen carefully. I'm about to say there's a good point here. Drawing your sword in those days means like you're holding a machine gun out in the street. People are going to stop you. It's not something light. You draw your sword, you're going to kill someone. He drew his sword and he went out, he's going to kill someone. Then he found the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, What's, Why have you drawn your sword, Ya Zubair? He said, I heard that someone had abducted you, Ya Rasulullah. You were either killed or being held hostage. And he said, and what were you going to do with that sword? 
He said, I was going to kill the, anyone who had taken you. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, made a dua for Az Zubair and for his sword. Now there's something very subtle here. Listen how the Prophet ﷺ is nurturing and channeling and guiding this young man. He didn't tell him off. He didn't say anything bad to him. But he did ask him a question. And what are you going to do with that sword, Ya Zubair? He made him think and reflect. As if the Prophet, peace be upon him, is telling him, use your wisdom. You don't just draw your sword and go around the street terrorizing people. But there is wisdom. So what is the Prophet Sallallahu teaching him? He wants him to keep his passion. He wants him to keep his passion, that passion of loving the Prophet, peace be upon him, defending his messenger. But at the same time, he added to it wisdom. Passion with wisdom. Young people have energy. They'll jump before they think. They're impulsive. Zubair was impulsive. Impulsive. You know, when you, when, when you react very quickly but without thinking, that's what Zubair was. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, wanted to teach him how to be patient, use his passion, but not be impulsive and just react. Think, calculate, and use the right thing at the right time, in the right place. So he made dua for Zubair and his sword for it to be used in the right place with wisdom. Because Islam wasn't sent in order to convert people to Islam by the sword or by force. You all know that, right? And so Zubair grew up with the Prophet ﷺ being nurtured and channeled in that manner. He was a warrior. He was tall, taller than Sheikh Saeed. You know the Sheikh that was here before me? He was taller than him. He was very athletic, not very wide, but athletic. Flat stomach. And he was dark and hairy. Hairy men means there's lots of testosterone happening, which means lots of strength. Yes, we've got a single brother with lots of hair on his face. And they were tough and strong. As Zubair radiallahu anhu was that type. Man, he didn't care who was in front of him, mashallah. He was just like his mum. In Mecca, he married Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Does anyone know who Asma is? Asma was also rough and tough. She was fearless. She's called Dhatun Nitaqain. You know the story about when the Prophet and the father wanted to migrate and she used to carry the food to them <clears throat> while she was pregnant. While the Prophet was a, you know, a fugitive, they were after him to kill him. And she used to travel in the middle of the day in the heat of the sun, climbing up the mountain, carrying food for them. That's a tough woman. Well, she's the one who married Az Zubair, radiallahu anhuma. And what a perfect match. Compatibility. Zubair needed someone who's able to handle his personality. And Asma, radiallahu anhu, needed someone who's able to live along with her and support her in her personality. So, compatibility is very important, brothers and sisters. But there's a controversy. A lot of people think that Az Zubair was rough and tough on his wife. Some say that he used to bash her, he used to hit her. There is not one single authentic narration about Az Zubair anhu ever being abusive to Asma. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I'll tell you a couple of things. You ready to hear it? All right. So, Asma radiallahu anha and the Zubair were looked at as one of those almost perfect couple. She said, he used to look after me immensely. And he used to get embarrassed when people saw me carrying stuff on my head, bringing, you know, helping my husband in work. Because at the, in the beginning, Zubair wasn't well off. He used to get embarrassed of that. He used to say, I, I can't handle 
that the Prophet ﷺ sees you carrying stuff on your head when I'm supposed to be your provider? Because of the lack of time, I'm, you know, I'm just summarizing it. At one time they went to Hajj. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, whoever has the hadi, the sheep that they have to slaughter, then they have to assume ihram. You know, ihram in hajj, the husband and wife can't approach each other. You're in ihram. Isn't that correct? So as Zubayd had his sheep, he had it. He was in ihram. But Asma did not have a sheep, so she was able to get out of ihram. So what she said, she said, I decorated myself, made myself look good, and I went to my husband, as Zubayr, and he said to me, stay away from me. And I said to him, what, do you think I'm going to eat you? Wallahi, that's exactly how it says. Do you think I'm going to eat you? Now tell me something. If she lived with an abusive husband, would she be able to talk like that to him? No. They have a good relationship. A very good relationship. The Prophet wasallam did say, I heard some of you men hit your wives. You are not the example among us. You are not the example among us. Brothers and sisters in Islam, husbands and wives, you are together raising these children and you require to support each other and value each other. Why? Because you, O oh man, did not choose to be born a male. And you, sister, did not choose to be born a female. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chose that for you. And therefore, we need to respect the creation of Allah in the form that you were born. And need to respect yourself, whether you are a male or a female, as the way Allah created you. As Zubayr radiallahu anhu, he went into, he took part in every battle with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Badr, Uhud, Khaybar, Khandaq, all of them. There wasn't a single battle he didn't take part in. And he was so entrenched in battle with the Prophet ﷺ and so brave that there, wasn't, there was almost not a single part of his body that didn't have a scar on it. And in fact, there were three deep holes in his body. Two in Uhud and one in another battle called Yarmouk when they were fighting against the Romans. And his son, Urwa, he, has, he had a son later on named Urwa, he says, I used to play with dad's scars. And there were three holes in his body. I used to poke my finger right inside playing with the holes in his body. MashaAllah. Now that's a man. <laughs> As Zubayr radiallahu anhu once in the battle of Khaybar, the Prophet peace be upon him found out that the Jewish allies had committed treason. And he wanted someone to leave the post. All the companions had went and, and stood on the post at the trench. It's a very vicious post. And there were no more men left in Medina. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, found out that the Jewish allies, their neighbors had betrayed them and they were ready to attack the Muslims from the back. So the Prophet asked, who will volunteer to leave the post and go alone without security to find out if this news is true so we can prepare? Everybody was afraid to do that because anyone who left the post, you were going to die. Someone's going to attack you. You're going to be killed. The only person one is Az Zubair. He said, I will, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, avoided him three times for some reason. In the end, when no one else put his hand up, the Prophet said something important to Az-Zubayr. He said, every Prophet has disciples and supporters. Like Jesus Christ, he had his disciples, alayhi salam. He said, and my Hawari, my disciple is Az-Zubayr. When Az-Zubayr went and found out the information that the Jews were truly about to betray the Muslims, he returned back and he gave him the news. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said something else to Az Zubayr that he had never said to any other companion except Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. He said to him, Bi Abi anta wa ummi ya Zubayr. Fidaka Abi wa ummi. I would ransom my mother and father for you, O Zubayr. The companion said, That day all of us wished to be in Az Zubayr's spot. The, to say, Fidaka Abi, I'd ransom my mum and dad, it has to be someone extraordinarily important. And the Prophet said it to Az Zubayr and Sa'd, never said it to anyone else. So Az Zubayr is someone so important. He was one of the ten promised paradise. Time passed, and Az Zubayr radiallahu anhu lived on to witness the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
He also lived past Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's time, Umar radiallahu anhu's time, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu's time, until he reached Ali radiallahu anhu's time. And then something terrible happened. A great fitna between the Muslims erupted between Ali radiallahu anhu and Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. You know that story? It's called the Battle of Jamal. It was a fitna. And as Zubair happened to be on the other side, the wrong side, Muawiyah's side, against Ali radiallahu anhu. And Ali is his cousin. Yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi had said to Zubair before he, he died, said, Ya Zubair, you are going to be killed oppressed. Oppressed. But he was fighting on the side of Muawiyah. Ali radiallahu anhu gave him advice to stop. And then some companions came to him and said, Ya Zubair, what would your mother Safiya say if she saw you standing here fighting your own cousin when you are both promised paradise? You can't both be in the right. Yet both of you are promised paradise. So as Zubair began to think, and he finally decided to leave the battle. He put his sword back into its sheath and he walked away and slept under a tree. Then one of the men from the side of Muawiyah followed him and stabbed him in the back while he was asleep. That day, as Zubair told his son Abdullah, he had a son named Abdullah, he said, Ya Abdullah, people have left their wealth with me. It's not like today. Today you have banks. You leave your money in the banks, right? In your assets. In those days, they kept it with someone who they trusted the most. And the Zubair was one of those men. Very trustworthy. People used to leave hundreds of thousands equivalent of today with him. And he didn't leave it with him in the house. He used to give it to the poor. And he used to say to these people that who had, had left their money with him, he used to say to them, don't keep it with me as a savings. I'd like you to write up a contract that I am borrowing this money from you. Let it be a loan on my neck. Just in case he's not, you know, people are, don't pay it back. Just in case someone steals the money. Just in case it goes lost. He said, let it be a debt on my shoulders. So he said to Abdullah, his son, give back all the belongings to their people. Sell my assets. Sell this and sell that. And if you're not able to pay them back, then ask my master. Now, usually you say master in those days to a person who has a slave. He has a master. And as Zubair wasn't a slave, he didn't have a master. So his son said, who is your master, ya Abi? He said, Allah. Say, Allahumma, O oh, the master of Zubair, help me pay off his debt. And truly, Abdullah said, every time I was stuck, I would call upon the master of Zubair and his debt was paid off. And as Zubair said to him, Ya Abdullah, today I am going to be killed oppressed, as the Prophet ﷺ told him. And so it happened. And that man who killed him, he felt so proud about it. He goes with his sword. He took the sword of Zubair to Ali radiallahu anhu, and he's proud. He said, Look what I've done. I've killed the enemy. And Zubair said, The killer of Zubair will be in hellfire. He grabbed the sword and said, How? How could a man, the owner of this sword, which did not leave out a single battle that the Prophet ﷺ fought except it was there to be killed like this? Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu anhu. As I said, I've summarized this story and advisable to you to, for you to go back, read into it, and analyze the lessons that we can gather from it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have benefited us from this lesson. Jazakumullah khair for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.